and the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Today we celebrate what is known as Low Sunday, that first Sunday after Easter, called Low Sunday. as a, as a, a difference between the high of, of Easter. Now we're entering a, the Easter season more and more. <clears throat> and the um, Gospel of this morning's Mass for Low Sunday really has uh, some important doctrinal points that are uh, important for us to consider. First of all, we have it, <coughs> the Gospel of St. Luke, um, which is uh, the Gospel that we have for, <coughs> well, I'm sorry, the Gospel of St. John, which we have for the for Gospel of this morning's Mass, is um, an account that takes place on the very day of our Lord's resurrection, the night of his resurrection. Um, the apostles were gathered in the <coughs> upper room out of, as it tells us in the Gospel, out of fear of the Jews, thinking that they too might uh, have to <coughs> face the same faith that our Lord faced of uh, being put to death. But our Lord comes and he really consoles them, and he is very clear and very interested in beginning to really the work of the church, the sacramental <coughs> life, life of the church, uh, which he does <coughs> by instituting the sacrament of confession. So we have from the, the Council of Trent of the 16th century says that that account in the Gospel is the day that um, the time that Christ instituted the sacrament of penance. He says, who sins you forgive, they are forgiven them. Who sins you retain, they are retained. So Christ wanted to <clears throat> start out his uh, time after his resurrection uh, by instituting right away the sacrament of penance. So we see that uh, the forgiveness of sins is one of the, the first um, fruits, really, of the resurrection of our Lord. <clears throat> we should be really happy that, that our Lord uh, has given us this great sacrament of confession. Remember that our Lord came on earth to save man from sin, and the way he did it is, is through the sacramental life. So Christ doesn't do things without, in a way that we don't, we can't see things. He does it in a way that, that, that can help us understand better. He wants us to <clears throat> use all of our senses to understand what it is that he's doing in order to, to save our souls. And so he, he gives to us that visible sign, the sacrament of penance. So remember, the sacraments are outward signs instituted by Christ to give grace. We know that the sacrament of penance has all the elements of, of a true sacrament. So it's, it's important then that um, we have this um, understanding really of the need for the sacrament of confession, the need for the sacraments in general. So the sacraments are um, the main sources, main channels of God's grace. There's other ways that we can receive grace um, by prayer and by other things, but the sacraments are, are the main channels, the, the chief channels of God's grace was the way that God gives to us his divine life through the seven sacraments. So, of course, the Eucharist being the most important of them because the Eucharist is uh, really Christ, really and truly present. The other sacraments are actions of Christ. The Holy Eucharist is the, is the actual body and blood that Christ really and truly and present under the form of bread and wine. Uh, so that's certainly the most important of the sacraments. But Christ is also instituted in the other six sacraments, and one of which we see today in the Gospel of St. John, the institution of the sacrament uh, of penance. So it reminds us that Christ came for the, for the salvation of sinners, and all of us are sinners. We know that many times throughout the Gospel, our Lord shows us um, the importance, the necessity really of of um, doing penance for our sins. Many times when he, he performs a miracle, he says, now go and sin no more. And he's very concerned about uh, helping mankind to uh, be sorry for their sins and to, to stop sinning, really, to live in, in the union with our Lord. So the sacrament of penance is normally the, the main channel, the, the main way that we receive the sacrament, uh, we receive the, the forgiveness of sins, especially when it's the case of, uh, of a mortal sin. So Christ in the Gospel of today's Mass 
very first night of his resurrection, the night of his resurrection, Christ has instituted the sacrament of penance, sacrament which takes away sins that we've committed after our baptism. We have to realize that penance is something that all of us have to do, not only during the season of Lent, which we just ended, but really throughout the whole year. <clears throat> In this case, penance is is, this, is really seen as a sacrament, sacrament of confession that, that we receive, in, in which we receive the absolution of the priest, and uh, our sins are taken away. So we have to be certainly have that firm purpose of amendment and sorrow for our sins. So we, we must say that sorrow for sins is the most important of the steps that we make in, uh, to, in order to make a good confession because. Without sorrow for sins, not even God will not, not even God will forgive one of uh, our sins. So God is always willing to forgive our sins. We see that in the story of the prodigal son. We see the story of the good shepherd. We see that in many other stories, uh, many other parables and incidences in the gospel that that Christ is always most concerned about uh, reconciliation, reconciliation of sinners with God and of forgiving them. But he says also that for our part, we must uh, uh, sin no more, stay away from sin. That's something that is very, um, very important that, you know, we live in a world that has many, many great temptations, temptations that perhaps people in the past did not uh, face. Um, and so we have to be very careful to make sure that, that we try to stay away from all those temptations uh, to sin and to, to stray from the grace of God, from our union with our Lord. Uh, sacrament of penance is a way in which that normally happens. So let's try to remember that um, Christ is trying on, and, and is giving to us on that, that first day of the week, as it tells us in the Gospel, the night of his resurrection, Right away, he gives us the sacrament of penance, so the sacramental life of the church. Uh, he's interested, he wants to make sure that, that is <clears throat> begun, that the apostles who he had ordained priests just a few days before uh, would now be the ones that would administer the sacrament of penance. So the priest is the one who has given that power in the sacrament of ordination, his ordination to the priesthood, to forgive sins and in rare cases to, to retain sins, as our Lord himself said. So in a case where a person perhaps does not have sufficient sorrow or, or for a purpose of amendment, um, there would be in really very rare cases that the priest might have to um, retain sins. But normally the sacrament of penance is to reconcile people with God, to forgive their sins, and to um, Walk from the back into the life of grace and the union with our Lord. So very, very important. Um, so we have to have that, that sorrow for sins and for the purpose of amendment. And, to, and then the intention to do the penance that the priest gives us. So it's important that we, every day, we make an, what we call an examination of conscience. Uh, to examine ourselves and ask ourselves what sins we've committed on that day. So that before we go to retire at night, it's always a good idea to make that examination of conscience and it's necessary for us to make, in order for us to, to make a good confession, to examine our conscience, to be sorry for our sins, to tell us this to the priest, and the firm purpose of amendment to do the penance that the priest gives us. Uh, those are the steps that are necessary in order for us to make a good, uh, what we call an integral confession. And the the words that our Lord says to us um, in the Gospel of, of today's Mass would certainly imply that, that, that the sacrament of confession, we know it, uh, auricular confession, as we call it, would be what, <clears throat> what is uh, promoted by the Church, because the priest cannot forgive a person's sin if, sins if he does not know what, what they are. So that's why the Church has always has promoted this idea of uh, what we call the auricular confession, the confession of the penitent to the priests, um, something that goes back to many centuries in the church. 
And it is the way that those, especially in the state of mortal sin, are reconciled to God and uh, have their sins taken away. So that's why, again, we should have that great love uh, for the sacrament of confession and to receive it with certain amount of frequency, but also not to become excessively scrupulous, um, nor and always to make sure that we have a firm purpose of amendment. So uh, if we go to confession too often, it could be mean, it means that we're either being very scrupulous and <coughs> doubting the mercy of God, or we don't have the firm purpose of amendment, that's a certain amount of presumption. So both sins against the virtue of hope. So um, presumption would be the idea that, that our sins are going to be forgiven um, without God's help, uh, and that we can continue to sin and then just go to confession. And that, that, that presumption um, that, that our, uh, without, without the purpose of amendment that our sins will be forgiven, or the idea of a, a certain amount of scrupulosity in which we, um, we in a sense, deny, doubt the mercy of God. So we should try to avoid those two um, sins really against the virtue of hope and to try to <clears throat> be very practical very balanced with regard to our reception of the sacrament of, of penance uh, and to make sure that it is part of our, an important part of our spiritual life <clears throat> and that we try to confess you know, with humility, with sincerity, with honesty uh, the sins that we have committed, especially those which mortal sins we have the obligation to, to confess our mortal sins and it's always highly recommended that we confess our venial sins too because remember that Sin, all sin uh, offends God. So that's the, the first point that we want to make. We want to make today is the idea that on the very night of His resurrection, Christ uh, was anxious to continue the sacramental life of the Church, and it is He does it through the institution of the sacrament of penance, very, very great sacrament, and one for which we should have high, great esteem. Um, because, as I said, we're, <laughs> all of us are sinners. Sometimes we don't want to admit that, and oftentimes we, we think that um, we can just go right to God and confess our sins, but when it comes to this, the case of mortal sin that we really ordinarily have to have, go through, we have to have the, the sacrament of penance uh, and to, to, be, to be able to be um, forgiven of that sin. So we should remember that, the, the importance of the sacrament of penance. Second, thing, I think, point that we want to make in this gospel is the whole idea uh, of having faith. Now, it tells us in the gospel that on the night that Christ uh, appeared to his disciples, that one of the twelve, one of the eleven by that time, because Jesus, Jesus had betrayed our Lord and had died, but one of the other the eleven, uh, Thomas, the apostle, was not present. It tells us in the gospel that his name means twin. Uh, he was not there for one reason or another. We don't know exactly why, but he was not present. And later on, when the apostle saw him, they, they told him that they had seen the Lord, and he said he wouldn't believe until he could put his hands in the, the wounds of our Lord uh, and see the, the wounds uh, of his hands. And so, following week, Thomas was present when our Lord appeared again, and he said, um, uh, to, he, he kind of chastised um, Thomas for his lack of faith. Uh, and then when Thomas saw the, the, um, the wounds of our Lord, put his hands on the side of our Lord, and saw the wounds of his hands, he said, my Lord and my God, and uh, he believed. Our Lord says, Bless, blessed are those who, you, you have believed because you have seen, blessed are those who, who believe without seeing. So that's why, where we get the term doubting Thomas, that St. Thomas doubted that Christ had risen from the dead. He didn't have that faith. I think also in the Gospel, besides the institution of <coughs> the sacrament of penance, we see Christ urging us to have a strong faith. Right, so now faith is certainly one of the three theological virtues along with hope and charity. 
faith is that virtue by which we believe firmly um, everything that Christ has revealed to us and that the church teaches and proposes for our belief. We believe simply on the word of God revealing it. So faith is, is a, it's a supernatural virtue. It's, um, it's something that is, is um, has God as his proper object. So as we say, we talk about the theological virtues of faith, hope, and charity, that they have God as their proper object. Um, that's something that is very important to re recognize, to realize that that's, when we say faith, we're talking about something that is you know, faith in God, certainly, in his church, and something that is objective. It's not something that's based on our opinions. Oftentimes today we hear people talk about, I feel this and I feel that, and they base a lot of their, their ideas uh, on, on, on feelings. But that's really not, that's not what a faith is. <coughs> faith is not subjective. It's not um, something that is based on what we like today, I mean, and like again tomorrow. It's not based on our own opinions. It's not based on, 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 on feelings. It's based on what is objectively true. And it's very, very important, especially today, because of the fact that so many people base things on their feelings, their emotions, that we try to have that <clears throat> objective idea of what faith is all about. So faith, again, is that virtue by which we believe. Uh, and we believe because of on the Word of God revealing it, not because we can understand everything. So we have many <clears throat> mysteries of the faith, which um, on a natural level it would be almost be impossible to believe. Um, so faith gives us that the, the, the ability to believe in those things that we cannot see. So remember in the Gospel, St. Thomas the Apostle believed because he saw. We believe, we don't see everything, but we believe. It's important that we try to strengthen our faith all the time, especially in these times of confusion, of crisis, of uncertainty. Um, our faith is what, what keeps, us, keeps us whole and keeps us um, in, 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 uh, from sin and helps us to, to understand really what God expects of us. So um, then faith is, is this essential virtue. We see that in the sacred scripture many times. In the New Testament, St. John the Apostle says that uh, without faith we cannot be saved. And our Lord reminds us of the same principle, that, that faith is necessary for our salvation. But again, it's not faith in just what we want, just what we think is important is an objective faith. So we certainly believe in Christ's resurrection, we believe in the incarnation, <clears throat> we believe that God exists and that he punishes evil, evil and, and, and rewards those who are good. Uh, so our faith then is based on objective truth, the truth of the Catholic faith, which we learn hopefully in catechism, and which we try to put into practice throughout the rest of our lives. And it's, it's, it is true that many times we might be faced with a certain, a certain crisis in our faith. And that's why it's so important for us to make acts of faith on a regular basis, to really profess our belief, uh, to, possibly to uh, say the Apostles' Creed, to, to really um, uh, profess and to know, to live our faith to the best of our ability. So it's, again, it's, we can't absolutely know everything because uh, some of the things in which we believe are mysteries of the faith. How can we just explain completely the existence, the existence of the Blessed Trinity? So we, we don't say that there's three gods, we say there's one God and three divine persons. Yeah, that's something that, naturally speaking, we, we can't really believe it doesn't, wouldn't make sense. The same thing we talk about <clears throat> the real presence of Christ in the Holy Most Holy Eucharist, the, that Christ is really and truly present. So and if we look at the whole, so we see just a wafer, but that, that's what we see. Well, what really is there after the consecration is, is, is Christ really and truly present. And for us to, to 
recognize that to believe that we need faith. We need a supernatural faith. Without faith, we cannot believe in any of those things. Um, and we, we know that Christ's resurrection has given meaning to our faith. St. Paul says, if Christ had not risen from the dead, that our faith would be in vain. But Christ is risen from the dead. Yes, we were commemorating, we're celebrating this whole next 40 days of, of, uh, of the time of Christ's resurrection, to his ascension into heaven. We're, we're commemorating that, that resurrection. Um, and Christ is, um, is, is, is really and truly present. Uh, and he has given uh, hope, he's given us strength to our faith. Uh, and the, the resurrection really is the, the basis of our faith and the base of our hope. So we have the whole idea of the, the uh, penance, a sacrament of penance, which uh, Christ has given to us on the very day of his resurrection. We also have um, the whole idea of the importance, the necessity, really, <coughs> excuse me, of faith uh, for our salvation. So remember, not a subjective faith, not based on our opinion, not based on feelings. It's very important to get away from the idea always of, of uh, believing what we feel to be true. It's what is actually true, because we can, <coughs> if we base things on our opinion, our feelings, we can say, well, today I, I believe in this, or today I like this, but maybe tomorrow I won't. It depends on how I feel. Uh, it depends on, on uh, oh, my opinion could change and things like that. But dogmas of the faith don't change. Uh, we, they, they were revealed to us by God, uh, and we believe in them simply because of Christ revealing them to us. As we say in the Acts of Faith, that Christ can, never, can neither deceive nor be deceived. That's very important, uh, to have that objective faith, faith which uh, helps us to uh, understand as much as we can the various <clears throat> doctrines of our faith in the Catholic Church, which, which are for our salvation. So Christ came on earth for the salvation of mankind, and we have to um, make sure that, that we have that strong faith, a faith that, that will help us to, um, to uh, understand as much as we can the various doctrines of the faith. <clears throat> so these days, faith is so very, very important, very necessary, perhaps more so than ever before. In the season of Easter, especially I think this year, in which many times people have been deprived of the Mass, maybe even of the sacraments of Confession, Holy Communion, uh, it could be easy for them to become weaker in their faith, to become a bit cynical, to, to, to forget about things. But I think it's important, um, even more so now, to have a very, very strong, a vibrant, fervent faith, uh, because we're living in very, very difficult times. Uh, the devil is doing his work, uh, and we know that that's, there's that clash between the forces of good and the, the forces of evil. So for us, a fervent faith, faith that is, that is strong and based on the objective reality, objective doctrines, so very, very important today. So we should pray to God, ask Him for <clears throat> many um, graces so that we can grow in our faith and uh, really try to practice it to the best of our ability. So we see that throughout the history of the world, many times people have been deprived of the Mass, the sacraments, uh, but they've been, they've been able to maintain the faith. We have to make sure that we do that too. Um, the faith must be maintained, even though it's, it's a tragedy that many of our churches are, have been closed for the past month or so, uh, especially during the Holy Week and Easter, beginning of the Easter season. So we have to be strong in our, our faith by prayer, by um, making acts of spiritual communion, acts of perfect contrition to the best of our ability, and trying really to, to make sure that we're as good a Catholic as we can during these difficult times, and to pray really for the Church, pray that the Church will, will return to her senses and return to, to, to be really 
that beacon of light to people throughout the world. Uh, many times today people are kind of cynical, <clears throat> skeptical about what the church teaches, and they make up their own mind about what they're going to believe and what they're not going to believe. That's not faith. That's again is based on our opinion or our, our likes and our dislikes. And that's not that's that's the Catholic creed. So keep praying for strength and for guidance. And as always, as for the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, who helps us to um, really to know her son. So we, we have that saying to Jesus through Mary, uh, we go to our Lord through the Blessed Virgin Mary. And she was the one who had a great faith, a deep faith, and believed firmly that her son had risen from the dead. So let us ask for her intercession. Her intercession is very, very powerful especially in the season of Easter, and especially in these difficult times in which we're living. The devotion of the Blessed <coughs> Virgin Mary is so very important and will help us um, to be a stronger Catholic and to have a strong faith. So we pray that during the season of season that we will reap all the graces, the abundant graces that can come to us through this great season of Christ's resurrection, the greatest season of the Church's year, and ask that God will continue to strengthen us uh, in our faith and strengthen um, our resolve to remain fervent and strong Catholics uh, in spite of all the difficulties that we're facing today. And to remember that uh, it is through faith that we will be saved. Father, Son, Holy Ghost, Amen.